Today, I want to read from two sections in the Bible. It's a few verses from each, about three. But it's two different sections. One in Matthew 12, verse 46 to 49. Well, let me give you one at a time. Matthew 12, verse 46 to 49. And we're going to try to connect these two sections together. <clears throat> While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. So what happened? Someone came in and said, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Underline the last verse, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother, sister, and mother. Let's read the second section. You will find that in John chapter 17, verse 20 to 23. John 17 verse 20 to 23. I forgot to give the Creole translation for, for the first one. Um, but for this one is Jean chapitre 17, verset 20 à 23. Jean chapitre 17, verset 20 à 23. And the other one was Matthieu chapitre 12, verset 46 à 49. Okay, Matthew chapter 2, verse 46, 49. But we're reading John 17 now. John 17, John chapter 17. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Underline this section. This is why Jesus Christ's prayer from us is. We all will be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. So Jesus says, I want the church to be one, but not according to the world standard of unity. Not that fake standard, I shake your hand, I smile. We act like we are a team. You know the fake standard that you get in the workplace? And the minute that a co-worker could see that they can uh, get a promotion or they could get ahead of you, they're ready to backstab you, they're ready to talk about you to the manager. Not that kind of fake unity. That's in the world. But Jesus says in this section, look, just like the way I am in you, just like we have unity, the Father and the Son unity, okay? Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So not only must our unity be like Jesus Christ's unity with the Father, but he says the purpose that this unity exists is so that the world can see a difference. Because our standard of unity is not the same as the world. They need to see a difference. They need to see Jesus within us. Let's continue. I have given them, <coughs> excuse me, I have given them the glory that you gave me, 
that they may be one as we are one. Gardez qui ça, Jésus dit. Now, Jesus didn't only instruct us to be united. I don't know if you've seen what I'm seeing. He says, he, he, he give us a standard. And then after he give us a standard, he said this, I've given them the ability. That means we have the ability. Jesus didn't just give an instruction, do this. But we have the ability to do what Jesus asked us to do. I want the church to see that. Let's continue. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you are in me. May they be brought to complete unity, to let the world know that you want me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Underline the word complete unity, and I love those two words, complete unity. Not just to begin being united, but let the unity be complete so that we can withstand anything. That means don't let any whole exist. No empty spot exists. Nothing that Satan can grab a hold of and destroy that unity within the church. Let no whole exist. Complete unity from beginning to end so that the church can represent Jesus Christ properly and we can withstand anything that come against us, whether it is natural or supernatural, whether it exists in the natural world or it exists in the supernatural world. Anything that come against the church, we can with Stan. Let's continue this topic and let's connect these two sections together. When we look in Matthew chapter 12, verse 46 to 49, we see that Jesus have created this new word. Or maybe I should say words actually, it's two words. He's created a new two words or if we look at relationship wise, he created a new kind of relationship that never existed before. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus was teaching as usually, as he's usually doing. And then someone came up to him and say, your mother and your brothers, they, they would like to speak to you. They are outside waiting for you. Jesus took that opportunity. Hopefully I could be as half of a teacher as Jesus Christ is. That's one of the reasons that I teach Sunday school. Because, te because Jesus always wanted to make sure that he's equipping people that are around him and teaching his disciples because they have heavy responsibility to take upon. It is the same reason why I teach Sunday school. When I speak to my students, I always want to teach them as much as I know, although I try to hold back because I have to keep in mind of their ages. Maybe that's why many students well, at least when I was in Moshe de Jacob, I got the response that you write too much. <laughs> and I usually have many boards teaching. Well, when we, had, when we came face to face. But I want to give my students as much as possible because I know they're going to go out there in the world and face many challenges. And they got to be able to withstand and continue to be a Christian, a child of God, a God-fearing individual. 
Are you with me so far? So Jesus took the opportunity and he's teaching because he's going to die at 33 and a half years old. And he started his ministry at 30, which means he only had three years and a half. So he's teaching, he's teaching, he's teaching. So he took every opportunity to teach and then Jesus said to the person who said, your mother, your, father, your brother is there. Well, he said, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? He looked at the disciples and at that point he created a new kind of relationship. And that relationship is called church family. A new kind of relationship that did not exist before. He's turned to his disciples and told his disciples. He said, they are my mother. They are my brothers. He looked around and say, whoever does the will of God, they are my family. So he created a new kind and established a new kind of relationship. And that relationship supersedes, or we could say, and transcends a whole lot of things. It transcends blood related relationship, it transcends culture, it transcends race. It transcends gender. It transcends old or young. It supersedes all of these things. And it says it doesn't matter what color you are, what race, what country you come from. It doesn't matter who's your mother, who's your father, your blood-related mother or father. It doesn't matter what culture you come from. Whether you're from the Haitian culture, Caribbean, American culture, as long as you follow the will of the Father of God, you are my family. This is a new kind of relationship that he established. Now, when he established that relationship, he's not saying that we should abandon our blood-related families. By far, the Bible says we ought to honor and respect our mothers and fathers. So it doesn't mean to abandon your mother and your father. It doesn't mean to abandon your brother or sister. It does not mean to abandon your cousin. But he wants us to understand that besides our blood-related family, you have a second family call church family. He was establishing something that God wanted to create by sending his son. When he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, what he did was that the gospel, he made it able, God, my father, our father, made it able so that the gospel can reach not only the Jews, but reach the Gentiles. It reach us that are not Jewish. It reach us that are black. It reach us that are Asian. It reach us. He opened that doorway. He created that relationship and say, you are welcome in Jesus. It doesn't matter what country you are come from, what language you speak, what educational level you are in, how much money you have in the bank. That does not matter. It transcends all of this. And it simply say, if you follow the will of God, you are my brother. You are my sister. We will work together as one family. When you hurt, I hurt. Hmm. When you rejoice, I rejoice. <laughs> when most most are your pas facile, oui? No, <laughs> your pas facile. 
Il y a un peu de monde, je te dis ça des fois, les gens qui chagrent, il y a un peu de monde qui a aidé les gens qui chagrent. Mais au monde qui a réjoui, avec ou a réjoui avec moun ça, il n'y a pas de pire monde qui a réjoui avec moun qui a réjoui. Ou fait des sou moun, fait acheter au kai, fait acheter aux machines, yon joue nous travail, qui paye à pire l'argent, ou ka supporter moun ça, ou ka réjoui avec. Oh, si sa jalousie ou a fait, oh, au monde, fouet ça, il joue nos travail qui, qui, côté il joue 60 000 ou 80 000 dollars par année. Bon Dieu, me servez vous pour combien d'années? Pour qui ça? Ou pas bon travail ça? Jésus. I have to show you what God showed me. I have to say it. Si je ne dis pas, bon Dieu, à Kébé, je suis tombé sur moi. Je ne suis pas tombé sur moi. Parce que je suis campé devant Jésus-Christ. Dans le dernier jour, je ne suis pas tombé sur moi. Frère Franz, André, je ne suis pas tombé sur moi. Je ne suis pas tombé sur moi. Fouet France, m'pa konne ou. Soti la chien, m'pa konne ou. I have to tell you why he showed me. So, culture, age, country, job status, financial status, marriage or single, As long as you follow the will of the Father, we are family. We ought to work together. We should have each other back. If I hurt, you should hurt. If you can support me, support me. If I can help you, I'll help you. If you see a good that you could do for me, do it. If you can pray with me, Pray with me. If it's encouragement you can give, encourage me. Whatever ability God gives you to do, do it for me. Because your job as my family member is to build me up, to support me, just like my job as your family member is to build you up and to support you. We are one family and this is how we can withstand the natural oppositions and supernatural opposition ou pense satan content avec chaque moun ki la ki dem di ou bagay m pa konnen la vie spirituelle ou Ma kone ki vive, ki la vi ou a vive la kai. Men, paske ou fe efo pou vini nan l'eglise, pou tande pao bon Dieu, ave pao bon Dieu atre nan zoye ou, li atre nan panse ou, ave li atre nan kor, nan kor ou. Paske ou a fe efo sa, ki dem di ou, Satan pa reme ou. Ça ne t'a pas remé. Si ce n'est pas remé, allez côté ou allez sur le monde qui remé. Jésus-Christ. Alléluia. Bon Dieu bon. Bon Dieu bon. Pour aujourd'hui, c'est mon connaître. Pour aujourd'hui, nous savons que nous sommes famille. No matter what. We ought to get each other back. We ought to support one another. This is what Jesus Christ requires from us. May God bless you.